begs a proposal to somehow increase this uh, allocation from 6,000 rupees per farmer to 8,000 or 10,000. That's the SIP contribution, by the way, slightly lower than what we saw in the month of November. It's definitely been a down day since the word go. For now, we're seeing a around 120 point cut on the market. Well, that was a day so far. Hello and welcome to a fresh new edition of Closing Bell. We're kicking off this uh, new week, uh, this Monday, the second week of 2024 with the full strength of the Closing Bell team right here. We're coming to you from the CNBC TV in Motor Oswal Studios. I'm Prashant. With me, my colleagues, Reema and uh, Surbi here in the studios. Nigel, of course, is uh, back at his vantage point <laughs> in the newsroom. Guys, hi, good afternoon. Hi. The view from the top, huh, Nigel? How does it look? <laughs> Lots of red. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's sort of a day, I guess, right, Sirvi? But uh, <coughs> good to have everyone back, right? No, absolutely. I mean, uh, good to have everybody uh, back, full strength, and hopefully it'll stay that way for a while, <laughs> at least. But, you know, uh, we're kicking off also with the kind of slightly weakish markets, aren't we? Uh, I think the Nifty is down, uh, what, 120 points, 130 points. It's been that way since the morning. Uh, and uh, no real recovery uh, since. Just to, you know, uh, to look at, uh, by the way, global markets have also been weak. U Asia more than Europe and uh, US futures. Most of uh, your Asian markets were down between one, one and a half odd percent. So this is in line with hap what's happening in global and especially Asian markets. Remember, <coughs> US, S&P was down a percent and a half uh, last week uh, for the four days that it traded. <clears throat> Here in India, real estate, which is the which was the top performing sector last week, continues to do the best. Healthcare, which was the second best performing sector last week, that continues to be the second best gainer today as well. So there is momentum here in these two spaces. Public sector banks are seeing some pullback. FMCG is seeing some pullback. Metals are uh, the other sector, which is taking a bit of a knock. And of course, I mean, the supports, which we put out in the morning as well for the Nifty, comes in around the 21,400 level, which is still 150 points away. For the Nifty Bank, watch the close, because for the Nifty Bank, we are already trading, as we speak, below the 20-day moving average, a decisive close below it. We're not really far. I mean, by close, it could change. Uh, but if we do, <clears throat> I think uh, we're looking at uh, further downsides here. Uh, so that's the uh, overall picture out there. Remember, we've been sort of uh, saying this going into the end of the year. It's January is seasonally a weak month, especially after the kind of strong December we had. I mean, there is strong seasonality uh, in January, which suggests that, uh, you know, <clears throat> outperformance is never really happened. Down markets is more than... Uh, you know, it's happened more than often. So keep that in mind when you're looking and uh, looking at these markets taking a bit of a pullback. Uh, seems par for the course. Prima. Well, you know, on that point about January seasonality, the frequency of corrections has picked up. <coughs> in the whole of November, the month of November, there was no 100-point-plus correction on the Nifty. In the month of December, we had only one instance when uh, the Nifty corrected more than 100 points. And already, in the first few days of January, this is the second instance when we've got a 100-point-plus correction on the Nifty. So it's already started off on a bit of a cautious note. The market, which refused to correct in you know, the month of November and December, is already showing you know, some signs of fatigue some days when the markets are down. Um, you know, today, we're seeing a pretty large cut. And in fact, the Nifty is now at the day's low, 150 points lower, 21,550 on the Nifty. The Sensex is now inching towards a 500-point knock. Um, the last correction that we had in January was on 3rd of January, 148.4. PSU banks, FMCG leading the losses, so both those indices will come up. And in the FMCG basket, Britannia, Nestle, HUL, even a Titan, which started off in the green. When it opened, the stock was up, you know, 2% at a fresh 52-week high, but now has reversed those gains and is now down in the red. So FMCG has taken a beating today. Oh, absolutely. Uh, and, uh, you know, perhaps you could blame it uh, to an extent on some of the weakish Cues that we got commentary from some of the FMCG companies, Marico and uh, uh, you know some of the others, Godrej Consumer, for instance, that stock is still down about three, three and a half percent. But in general, I mean, whatever little buying we saw on FMCG last week, it's getting reversed very, very quickly, and the market is not finding uh, any real fighters today. N neither banks nor IT. There's no major big sector which can uh, pretty much put up a you know some sort of a show of resistance against the, the downdraft. I just want to say that 21,500 remains the all-important mark because that was the low that we hit intraday low last week. We respected that low and managed to have a nice close, I mean, a nice bounce above that. Uh, so let's see, we're right now about 40 points away from that very critical level. 
and that remains a big watch point. On the mid-cap side, I just want to point out that today is one of the rare days where mid-caps are actually falling a little more than the large caps. <coughs> Excuse me. The index is down close to a percent. Uh, there are far more many declining stocks than advancing stocks. So some amount of sobriety perhaps, uh, you know, coming into the mid-cap uh, universe as well. I'll just take, take some examples, stocks that I spoke of. Uh, so the, the FMCG names, Godrej Consumer, Marico, they are down anyway. Some of the updates that came in on financials, for instance, uh, on Bank of Baroda, that stock's been down about 4%. Market not like, liking the fact that they've not grown their deposit franchise uh, quarter on quarter. Then you have Bandhan Bank losing ground. A lot of the PSU stocks that were the high flyers last week, remember Hindustan Copper, Nigel was telling us all about it. Today there's a profit taking on that one as well. So it all, uh, Nigel, I guess it's, you know, all put together, uh, it's a weak start to the week. Uh, you just can't put it in any other way. Well, that's right. Uh, you know, and as we speak, actually, we're at the low point of the day. And the factor that's uh, really playing out is the Nifty Bank. All of last week as well, we were making this point that the Nifty Bank is swinging the Nifty around, particularly with the global uh, equity markets in a bit of a tizzy. You don't expect any support coming in from IT. So the banking names, on the day they do well, the markets move up. On the day they don't do so well, it, uh, you know, has uh, uh, definitely a big impact. And as we speak, actually, we're down 650 points on the Nifty Bank. You don't want that cash to get too deep. Last week, we broke the 20 DMA, but the next day itself, we bounced back and we conquered that park. Let's find out how do you trade the Nifty from here on. Though, Mitesh Chakar is uh, back with us. Uh, hi, Mitesh. Good afternoon. It's been that sort of a day. And I think in the last 20 minutes or so, we have seen increased selling pressure. Because now the Nifty is approaching the 21,500 mark. The last time around, we breached this level. We bounced back quickly. Do you think it's going to be a repeat or do you think we want to correct a little bit from these levels? Well, I think, uh, good afternoon. Uh, even I'm actually uh, waiting to find out the answer because 21,500 is the pivot, 21,500, 480 is the level, which uh, is an important support level. We are now approaching that. And, uh, you know, in case we break this, then this range bound uh, um, outlook, which I had, will possibly indicate that the range will shift on the downside by a little bit. And we might actually, in the worst case scenario, even trade 21,200, uh, 21,150 is also. That's the uh, short term view, but I'm not still very sure whether we'll hold on to these levels or, uh, you know, we'll break below them immediately. So I guess because it's, it's a mixed set of, uh, in, uh, you know, uh, mixed set of outcome if you look at multiple indicators. So waiting to figure that out. So not trading the index for the time being. On the stock side, I recommend a sell on India Mart with a stop at about uh, 2720 and a target of uh, 2630, 2620 on the downside uh, is possible. While ITC will be on the buy list at, 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 a, at, at a bit more of decline, uh, you know, at, at a marginally lower levels, if you get it around 465, 466, buy with a stop below 460 for a target of 480. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> well, um, Mitesh, thanks very much uh, for that. Uh, th let's focus on a few stocks, right? I mean, the market's down and out, but uh, <clears throat> Sula, Sula Vineyards uh, is uh, flying hi high. Our uh, in-house wine uh, connoisseur, uh, teetotaler wine connoisseur, is here. Mangalam is joining in away to tell us why. I mean, to analyze not the wine, uh, but the business behind the wine. Mangalam, take it away. Well, I'll be the worst analyst of <laughs> wines, though. As far as the wine numbers are concerned, you know, it's a 30% up move that we've seen in Sula Vineyards over the last two trading sessions. And that's largely because of uh, news reports that the Maharashtra government has decided to revive the wine industrial promotion scheme for five years. Basically, uh, under this scheme, what would happen is that the 20% uh, VAT that wine producers in Maharashtra would pay they are eligible to get 80% of that back as a refund. So overall, 16% of the overall VAT that they paid comes back to them. And as a result of which, uh, you know, on an average, the industry pays about 80 to 100 crore worth VAT from Maharashtra. And they are likely to get around uh, 60 to 80 crores back as a refund, of which the most amount would go to Suda, given its leading market share and revenue share in the state itself. CLSA uh, has uh, written today, they've actually raised their target price all the way up from 571 to 863 rupees per share. They've upgraded the stock to buy. And they said that now with this reinstatement of the subsidy, everyone would start focusing on volume growth for the industry. For the industry itself, if the volumes were to grow, Sula will benefit the most because they have 50% plus market share. And additionally, wine as a category is largely underpenetrated. So increase in wine's penetration could also aid their business. They haven't accounted for this uh, incentive coming in for the last four years into their books. But despite that, they've actually raised their FY24 to FY26 EPS estimates by anywhere between 0 to 4 odd percent. So as a result of which, we are seeing that 30% up move on Sula, be it Friday or Monday, wine's doing well.
Okay, thank you very much for that. Deepak Shanoi from Capital Mind is with us on the show. Uh, Deepak, we've already seen a 15% rally on Sula and CLSA's target price suggests that it could go up by another 35% in the next uh, 12 months to 863. We know consumption is doing well, the premium consumption, the luxury consumption, travel, drinks, etc. But, uh, you know, the stock has done well and what are the prospects from here on for Sula? Do you see it rallying so much in the next 12 months? Uh, to be honest, you, I haven't analyzed the stock. In fact, I was just looking at it and I was saying, wow, it's a pretty interesting move. But uh, uh, we'll have to just see if this promotion scheme, uh, when it comes, uh, how much of the, uh, you know, how much of it translates to earnings for the company. And, uh, you know, therefore, uh, is it a really a big trigger? Uh, we'd seen this a long time back and I was, uh, I was interested, but not at the valuations that it was at. And I don't think... Uh, uh, right now, my view has changed. Right now, I will, of course, have to go and look deeper into the promotion scheme and whether, uh, uh, you know, uh, how, how it will affect the stock. In general, I think uh, alcohol, uh, you know, uh, and wine, maybe premium wines as well, are, I think, a very interesting and growing uh, sector for India. We generally don't uh, consume as much of the premium brands um, as people abroad do. And as India gets richer, you're going to see a lot more of this consumption. Uh, but at the same time, you can't overpay uh, extremely for the valuation. Uh, you might want to consider something like this for a long-term exposure. And we have some uh, uh, players in the sector in our in our portfolio. But I will take a look at Sula before I give you a verdict on it. Mm, okay. Uh, that is Sula. What a move uh, in the last couple of days. And of course, the last one year, it's been a great one. Deepak Stiaur, we have more questions for you. And we're going back to Manglam because it's all about consumer trends, moving stocks. I don't know, Manglam, it's more wine versus less soap and less parachute hair oil. What's going on with uh, Godrej consumer and, and Maricop? And what, what stood out for you in the updates that's making the market so nervous? Well, what's making the market nervous is that uh, the good things are already priced in. The bad things are worse than what the street was anticipating. What are the good things? Both of them thought that, you know, there would be margin expansion and gross margins would expand for both Marico as well as Godrej consumer. But the bad things, everyone thought that consumer sentiment would see a slight recovery. Turns out not. And over and above all of this, both the companies will actually report negative revenue growth in uh, the third quarter. Though for entirely different reasons. So let's start with Godrej consumer. They said that for their overall business, they would see mid-single-digit volume growth. On a constant currency basis, the revenues will grow closer to double digits. However, on a reported basis, uh, the revenues would decline. And that's largely because of the big currency depreciation that we've seen in LATAM and parts of Africa as well. As far as their India business is concerned, sentiment is not very different from the second quarter. Mid-single-digit organic volume growth is what the company would report. But including Park Avenue, there would be double-digit volume growth. Indonesia is also showing signs of recovery. And as uh, is Africa, but the weakness in Africa is largely because of the restructuring that the company will do in the African operations starting the fourth quarter. For Marico itself, the problems, however, are a little more than Godrej consumer because they are doing a single digit sort of volume growth in India. At the same time, there's been weakness in all their core businesses, which is parachute coconut oil, Safola, where trade sentiment is weak, the base is extremely high. And the third one is their value added business, where because of weak consumer sentiment, the performance is uh, lower than estimated as well. What's doing well for them is the foods and premium personal care business. But that is something that the street already was factoring in along with gross margin expansion. So lack of growth or lack of expected revival hasn't happened. And as a result of which, these stocks are lower. Okay. Clearly, my purchase of one bottle of aloe vera parachute oil, clearly that didn't, uh, you know, tip the needles for <laughs> Marico this time around. Thank you very much uh, for that update, Mangalam. Let's actually take that, uh, you know, conversation back to Deepak. Deepak, FMCG, and you know, the thing is, mid-single digits. And the market's given its verdict. You keep coming back with mid-single digit volume growth. We're not interested at these valuations. Your thoughts on, you know, FMCG as it starts off 2024 after a you know, fairly sluggish, anemic 23. Uh, how would you approach these stocks? They haven't run up as much as the industrial side or the CapEx side. So is there a case? But if you keep getting mid-single digit, then, then will that case actually come through? Actually, mid-single digit is pretty much what you should expect from overall. I think unless you have like a new brand or something that's coming in that's premium or something like that, it's difficult to take the same old brands, you know, uh, maybe aloe vera parachute may do well, but parachute by itself, 
I I think uh, the growth will be in maximum mid single digits. Uh, in general, that's not because of anything else. Because our population grows at one percent, penetration has already reached where it uh, probably uh, can be. So I think uh, growing at that level would be just small price appreciation, and volumes may not grow by a huge amount. Uh, in general, that's why I mean I'm afraid of FMCG valuations because they are factoring at some factoring in at some point twenty twenty five percent kind of growth, uh, whether it is price or volume or put together. And I don't think that's easy to come by after that, you know, uh, mini kind of bull run after uh, um, uh, the COVID uh, return after COVID. Uh, I don't think that's sustainable. So I, wo I won't place a lot of uh, faith on large volume growth in, in traditional FMCG. Something new that comes in, something that's premium, I think will do well this year. Later half of the year, you might see some revival because of the elections. In India, elections is like a massive Robin Hood transfer of wealth from the rich to the poor, uh, which is what happens in elections. Money is distributed in the rural areas. That might result in some volume increase. Again, I feel that's temporary. It'll kind of come in and go. Uh, uh, so I, I personally feel valuations are a little rich. Uh, but these companies are good in terms of not having debt and having a stable uh, return on capital and all that for the longer term. Uh, just that the valuations are too rich for them to justify uh, uh, without any serious amount of growth. All right. Hi, Deepak. Good afternoon. Uh, Deepak, what about the banking space? You know, that's come in for a harder knock today. And sometimes these sort of corrections give you an entry point. Hey, you've got a couple of, you know, names that are actually taking a harder knock. Bandhan Bank, there are some rumors floating around. Bank of Broda is down close to around four and a half percent as well. Uh, any of these banking names that you look to buy, because after all, valuation by some of the larger banks in particular are trading pretty much in line with their averages, and also there's earnings growth outlook as well that is being factored in. Yes, I think credit growth is continuing to be at least at the systemic level around fifteen to seventeen percent plus. I think the private banks will kind of grow a little bit, a little bit more than that. So. Um, some of the larger ones we have investments in. Uh, I'm not so sure about Bandhan. The recent circular by RBI around NBFCs and banks with their exposure to uh, loans, uh, specifically around microfinance loans, they haven't actually clarified. But my reading of the circular says that they might have to provision even banks that lend directly to microfinance borrowers uh, will actually have to provision larger amounts because these are effectively uncollateralized personal loans. Uh, so uh, we'll have to wait for results to see how uh, you know the the provisioning has changed for these banks. Uh, I don't see any recent trigger like last one or two days that should change the outlook towards banks. Uh, but I feel that we should wait for results to see how you know some of those recent circulars by RBI, some of the recent moves by RBI have affected uh, how they provision for things and how their uh, NPAs start to show up. At least the commentary around NPLs. So um, uh, right now, I'll focus on some of the larger banks which are more diversified exposure than right uh, now a Bandhan or some of the smaller banks. Uh, simply, I mean, also I want to play safe here until uh, we get results out to see where uh, you know value lies. Mm. Bandhan, uh, COVID lows was uh, 160 and it's been, you know, amongst larger firms, or rather larger stocks, perhaps one of the <clears throat> sort of uh, uh, you know, underperformer, actually huge underperformer, right? And the stock's about 230. Uh, the recent low was 185 or so. Uh, so it's actually, uh, you know, gone to within that range of uh, the uh, absolute lows of uh, COVID. <clears throat> so not quite there, uh, but it's done pretty poorly as a <clears throat> stock. Deepak, uh, <clears throat> afternoon, anything new you've bought lately? I've been struggling actually to buy something new. We've been buying more of what we already own. Um, uh, a lot of players in the engineering space have been doing well, I think partly because of CapEx revival, uh, a lot of B2B names here. Uh, um, you know, the, the idea here is, I think, with CapEx revival, with engineering revival and manufacturing in India actually taking, uh, you know, uh, control of some growth. We've seen that in the GDP numbers as well. I think uh, this could be a game-changing sector um, for investors going forward, not because... Uh, uh, you know, they will show outstanding performance, but relatively the valuations have been uh, beaten down. They have, uh, for the most part, reduced, industry has reduced uh, their overall credit debt levels compared to their equity levels have, in fact, uh, for large and mid caps, uh, 
uh, turn to negative. A lot of them, in the sense, uh, you know, the they have a lot more cash uh, 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 in the large and mid cap space than uh, the debt levels. So, to the extent that there's uh, uh, there's there's a lack of leverage, there is scope for them to expand uh, with capex coming on play. So, uh, I'm ex excited about that space. Uh, we've been looking at you know players in the tourism space as well. The tourism um, in India seems to be having a really really strong uh, 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 tailwind. And while I'd gotten out of some stocks earlier, I think it's probably time to look at some of them going forward as well. Uh, we're not. I'm not taking names right now because we're still in the process of purchasing them. But I think these are the two areas where uh, it's quite interesting. Uh, not so much into financials right now. Definitely not not yet into pharma. So I think that's again a promising space. Uh, still have to look and find. I haven't bought anything new in the last few last few weeks or uh, you know maybe two months or so. Uh, Deepak, we'll leave the conversation there. Thank you very much uh, for joining <coughs> in. Let's get you now an exclusive conversation. Bharat Forge's CMD, Baba Kalyani, turned 75. And on this occasion, Shireen spoke to the man himself, his son Amit Kalyani, on the way forward for the defense business and also the future expansion and acquisition plans. But what I want to understand from you is the pace of acceleration that you've seen. And I know you said previously that the last 10 years have perhaps been the busiest that you've seen in your career. Uh, you know, it took you 45 years to get to 10,000 crores, 20,000 crores next year or uh, year you know, after next. Year <laughs> after next. On track to, to get to that? Yes. Very much. Specifically from an export and a global play, a large chunk of your strategy has also been driven by acquisitions and you've done many acquisitions over the course of the past several decades. Is that going to continue to be a driver? So I think going forward acquisitions will be very selective. They will be in technology domains, but we will make acquisitions in India because in India for us to scale up manufacturing capability. Uh, bandwidth, technology and know-how will be the easiest way for us to uh, kickstart our growth this in new on sectors. The, on the mobility side or outside? This it? is in the whole manufacturing gamut. If you look at the acquisitions we have made in the casting business, we acquired two foundries with three plants in Coimbatore and we are going to make similar acquisitions because this will give us a head start in uh, growing our business. These are all industries where we see huge uh, opportunity for business to shift, especially from Europe. Uh, China plus one will help. And India is going to be competitive in these sectors. So I think these are opportunities that are going to give us tremendous opportunities for growth. Where do you see the specific gaps that you want to plug by way of acquisitions today? You talked about the foundries that you acquired in Coimbatore. Anything on the anvil at this point in time? Any specific gaps no, we, that you we continue to, to look at areas. So. The one thing I will say is that we will acquire businesses that are high quality and well run. We will not buy businesses that are in distress. As you look at the advantages that you enjoy today, as you look at the moats that you've been able to create for yourself, what gives you the most confidence in being able to, from here on, I mean you said 20,000 crores maybe by next year or the year after that. What's the aspiration from then on? See, I mean, you look at India's economy today, we are a little less than $4 trillion, some 3.7 or something. And the aspiration for India as a country is to take this close to $30 trillion. So we should look at our growth in relation to the growth of the country. The country is going to grow eight times, then we should be growing 10 times in that year. And it's not a long period, it's 25 year period. I have already crossed 52 years in this company, struggling. So I think we have a base that can allow some explosive growth as the country grows. Eventually, uh, you know, plans to take any of these verticals public, you know, a, a listing at, at some point over the next few years? See, uh, I, I, I foresee that each vertical will be a standalone business. Now, whether they get listed or not depends on their size scale and whether their cycles and their businesses require capital or they require the capital markets to get uh, the reflection of the true valuation. Mm. What, what would you like to see happen on that front? You know, I mean, there are some businesses that will grow faster than the others, there's no doubt. For example, I think the defense business will go faster than uh, most other verticals. And there might be a time in the next few years where that business will be bigger than our core business. 
uh, because you know it also uses our core business technologies like metal farming, forging, machining, etc. So uh, you know that's a great possibility, and if that happens, it would be better off as an independent company. So the next three to five years, you believe that perhaps you could be at that inflection point for the sure. defense business. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, 75, 52 here at at Bharat Forge. Uh, uh, are you are you now planning to sort of step back? Uh, any any plans at this point in time? Or are you still You're ready this to young go? man. <laughs> the young man has a say, does he? <laughs> yeah, of course. I'm ready to step back and go on a holiday somewhere. <laughs> so what what's stopping you? He's stopping you. <laughs> you know, I think uh, my father is happiest when he's here. This is his first love, and I think uh, we're all deeply motivated by him, by his passion for what he does, and the energy he brings and the ideas. Uh, you know, the whole defense business has been his baby. And, uh, you know, I think uh, it keeps him young, it keeps him active. And I hope that he keeps uh, doing this because he has so much to give back to our company, to the country, and to teach uh, a lot of young people uh, new things. <laughs> Baba Kalyani at 75, passionate, he's got purpose uh, and a big inspiration for many people. You can catch excerpts from this conversation all day today on CNBC TV 18. We will slip into a very short break on the other side. We'll invite Rajesh Bhatia from ITI Longshot Equity Fund. Stay tuned. All right, uh, welcome back. Uh, you got the market, which is uh, down 185 points. 21,525 is where we are at. Uh, Rajesh Bhatia is now joining us. He's Chief Investment Officer at uh, ITI Asset Management uh, Company. Uh, Rajesh, uh, great to have you with us here. Appreciate your time uh, on CNBC TV 18, and congratulations. I think, uh, <clears throat> you know, assets under management for the mutual fund business have reached 6,000 crores. Uh, so, <clears throat> I mean, it's a milestone, and uh, here's to many more. Uh, Rajesh, you're someone who looks at 
<clears throat> you know, you kind of marry the macros and the micros. Uh, you've always done that. Uh, so do that for us right now. How, how are things looking with the run-up that we've had uh, and, uh, you know, uh, the, the sharp outperformance uh, for the market here last year, the year before, I mean, actually, for the last few. Where does it leave us as we begin 2024? Uh, great, Prashant. Thank you uh, so much uh, for congratulating us on that milestone. It's It re just reinforces for us uh, that we have a right to win in this market, and it kind of motivates us to kind of move forward. So as far as that, the question is concerned, you know, look, uh, the entire world is looking at India as the fastest growing uh, uh, economy and the most predictable story uh, across the globe. And when I look at this market, what kind of encourages me is the breadth of sector participation, uh, which tells me that the quality of the market is very good. It's a very strong market. It's in fact a bull market, right? And, and the second is the nature of the sectors which are participating in this uh, rally, which is economically sensitive sectors, auto, NBFCs, banking, right? Capital goods, real estate, et cetera, et cetera. Now, usually the markets are the leading in indicator for uh, the economy. And if economic sensitive centers across the board are participating, it's actually portends uh, start of an economic cycle. So we are in a bull, a bull market. We are going to be, uh, uh, a, this is going to be a long range uh, uh, bull market. You know, uh, so I'm pretty encouraged with the structure of where we are and what's to come as we move forward. Mm. Uh, Rajesh, I want you to talk about this uh, point that you made. There is value in large caps, but the India growth story is in the broader market. Now, even three to four months ago, valuations for most mid caps and small caps were higher than the historical levels. And yet, if yeah. you had not participated in it because of high valuations, you would have missed out on a phenomenal 30 40 percent up move in a very crunched period of three to four months. I remember so many mutual funds too had stopped inflows into the small cap funds, citing high valuations. Um, so even though there is growth in mid and small caps, uh, how should you, you know, look at valuations here from now on? Should we be okay with higher valuations for some of these defense plays, railways, etc., which have been the darling of uh, the market? You know, the, you know, the conventional wisdom is that the mega caps is really where the value is. And while that is true, I don't think that's really where the India growth story is. Uh, my sense is the India growth story really started afresh now with this, this post-COVID central government reaction to, to kind of prevent a downturn. And they stepped up capital expenditure. So the fiscal deficit on investment, the fiscal spending on investment is at a close to a 20-year high. And that's why you're seeing a lot of the capital goods, real estate, uh, uh, roads, railways, uh, encouragement to PLI on defense, uh, as well as electronic manufacturing services. That has become the leadership of the market. So if I were to look at the market, I would say the leadership is really in the capital goods space and the public sector enterprises space, which have also transformed themselves. And if you look at the cycles, you know, we had a bubble uh, between 2003 to 2008, and later stages being a bubble, uh, where you know there was a lot of capital investment that took place. Now, because the burst, the bubble burst in 2008, 2009, then we had almost a decade of ennui in the capital goods sector. And that has started to kind of return to energy in the last two years. So these are long duration cycles. And after a period of ennui for 10 years, they are now only now starting. So this is a start of a cycle. Yes, valuations have gone up in these categories, but you know we are still at an early stage of this cycle. So my sense is then if valuations do correct, you must continue to participate in these leadership sectors, which is the investment cycle themes, as I point out. Okay, so investment and CapEx, keep the faith in those themes. By the way, the market's now looking at a 180-point fall. The Nifty came close to last week's low, 21,515 is the low that we've made today. Uh, blame it on the banks, blame it on uh, IT not providing support, or even other large cap names like uh, you know, Lever or Reliance. Nothing is really working out in today's market action and days low on the bank Nifty as well. Rajesh, uh, you know, as I see the screen today, good afternoon to you. As I see the screen, you know, there's a lot of money coming off PSU stocks. Uh, bank of Baroda is one example. You can argue the market's reacting to the business update. But even otherwise, I mean, NMDC, Nalco, Hindustan Copper, you know, Central Bank of India, PSU Bank's actually a very weak, weak place to be in. 
So when an investor sees days like this, I think the question that he or she will ask is, is this the kind of fall I need to buy into, into the PSU story? Or is this an indication that the good times are now coming close to an end? So I, I might as well start booking profits. You know, what would you uh, do or what would you tell your you know, fund managers to do here? Stay invested. Uh, as we kind of just okay. pointed out, that it has been a fantastic run so far. I mean, the last two months have been uh, gigantic months, right? Uh, so it's very, very uh, uh, natural uh, to expect some kind of profit booking to take place and some reversal to take place as well. Uh, but that doesn't bother me. Look, uh, if you look at the, uh, what I usually worry about is if we are at a late stage of an economic cycle and if we are at a late stage of a valuation cycle, that's when you have real permanent destruction of capital. Right, But here we are talking about a very early stage of the economic cycle. Of course, the valuation enthusiasm has gotten, uh, thanks to the kind of multi-year story that everybody can see, uh, the valuation cycle has become a little more expensive. So that will correct. But those opportunities you use to kind of add as you move forward. So as even for our mutual fund investors, we keep telling them the way to participate in India is really go through the SIP or the STP route uh, and capture this uh, leadership areas that we are talking about. Hi, Rajesh. Uh, good afternoon and congratulations on this feat of hitting that 6,000 crores in terms of AU AUM. If I'm not mistaken, in the last 12 months, I think the growth has been to the tune of nearly around 50%. So good on you, good on your team as well, but added responsibility now. You know, I like the point you're making in terms of the equity markets could be nearing, you know, their upper end in terms of valuations. But in terms of the economic growth, well, we're still at an nascent stage, which tells you that there's plenty of scope for mid and small caps to do well. But let's talk on one of the themes that you're talking about. The leader has been the PSU sector. And you're sounding pretty optimistic on that space as well. From the PSU basket, what do you like? Will you go with the banking names? Do you believe that defense is still more to play, railways? What would you look at? And we're talking about a five, six year horizon from here on. So Nigel, uh, thank you so much uh, uh, for your wishes. But I just want to correct. We have grown 50% in the last nine months and have almost doubled uh, in the last uh, uh, 12 plus months, actually 18 months. Uh, so we've had a fairly uh, good trajectory as far as... Go, good on you, Rajesh. Uh, well done uh, on Thank that front. Just one quick clarification. This is yeah. a, a function of the market or has it been inflows have got ramped up as well? Because the markets have moved up. So some part of that benefit uh, would be of that. And then you can take us through the PSU theme. Sure. So I think it's a function of both uh, the uh, mark to market as well. Uh, I think uh, we are primarily an equity uh, uh, fund house. And of course, because of the uh, phenomenal run that you've had uh, in the equity markets, we've had uh, very, very good uh, uh, mark to market gains as well. Our gross sales has been fairly good. Uh, I, you know, that's the number I have. I can't give you the breakup between mark to market and net new sales, but I know that our gross sales was also a very sizable number over the last 12 months or so. So I think it's a con uh, it's a contribution from both mark to market gains and as well as good inflows that we've been receiving uh, as a fund house. To come to your public sector uh, question, uh, look, I think let us say if I was just to focus on the power theme. Now, why I'm focusing on the power theme is I think there is tightness in the power sector, right? So you would typically go from an underinvestment in power to an overinvestment in power. And which means that you're going to have probably a five, seven year cycle. So, you know, equipment suppliers, IPP producers, financiers, uh, and these include public sector companies as well. Uh, I would say that you combine both. You buy the leadership of the market, which is capital goods, and you buy public sector uh, enterprises in that category, and I think you'll come out fine. Mm. Uh, <clears throat> okay, I mean, uh, you know, that uh, point about what uh, Nigel also reiterated, what you made earlier, which is the fact that the India growth story is in mid and small caps, right? <clears throat> because I, I guess large caps, many large caps don't have those kind of businesses, right? I mean... Yep. Uh, <clears throat> where which, where you can participate in uh, many of the areas where the government is doing you know bulk of the heavy lifting in terms of spending etc so uh, the, you know you began by saying the consensus is that large cap has value and maybe there is some merit to it would you reckon that uh, those looking for you know alpha generation from large caps will are in for some disappointment in 24 rajesh no no i wouldn't say that i mean i would say that of course you're <clears throat> going to make equity type returns even in the large caps Right, uh, but you typically let's say if the IT companies large caps probably they'll grow at twelve percent per annum, right? Uh, 
some of the uh, consumer companies which have been disappointing uh, yeah, you know today uh, probably they'll grow at about 12% as well uh, and you know you would have large cap banks uh, you know they will also probably give you 14 15% kind of returns but you know you are not coming to india for the 12% kind of or 14% kind of returns the opportunity in india now let me give you a data set you know, I took out a list of companies which are growing at 20% plus on a trailing 12-month basis on top line and bottom line. We found there are 200 companies with a market cap of greater than 1,000 crores. Now, so what is my job? I have to create a portfolio of 25 to 30 companies out of these fast-growing opportunities there, which is the India growth story, really, right? So, and our preference is to stock pick among these to find companies which are winning companies which are gaining market share, et cetera. So I have to buy one out of these seven companies. So that's my opportunity set. So I think, you know, I would rather to play the India growth story focus here than uh, the mega caps, uh, which will give you uh, equity type returns, but I don't think that's really where the excitement is. Thank you uh, for joining in. Wish you all the very best. We need to slip into a break on that note. We'll come back and get you a few BTSD calls from our technical experts. Welcome back. Well, the markets are struggling. We have moved to the low point of the day. The Nifty is now down closer on 200 points. And the Nifty Bank is the one that's taken a harder knock. A few stocks though, should come up for you in the screen, which are notable big movers. IEX intraday chart comes up for you. That's moved to the low point of the day. It's now down closer around 2%. But in terms of gainers, Surbhi was speaking about the stock with quite a lot of excitement post the weekend. That Sula, it was up 15%. As we speak, you know, the shop is closed. The winemaker has moved to the upper circuit. It's close to around 20% higher as we speak. So keep an eye out on that one as well. Mitesh Shakar is back with us. Mitesh, what would you do? You know, in terms of if you had a trade on the index, what would it be? And also fill us in with your fresh buy or sell calls. Yeah. 
So on the index, uh, Nigel, I don't have a, a trade, you know, because as I said, 21, 500, 21, 480 is my support level. And I'm not sure whether we will gap up tomorrow or gap down tomorrow, depending upon the US queues and the global markets. But uh, the structure is in very positive to me to, to me to, you know, buy immediately and hope that the support will come into play. So as of now, avoiding the index. Uh, on the stock side, uh, uh, IPCA Labs is something which I would suggest as a STBT. Keep a 1101, uh, 1102 as the stop loss for tomorrow and uh, uh, look for a target of around 1075, 1070 on the downside uh, uh, in the opening trade. So I'm expecting that the weakness which the stock is showing will continue. And the other stock uh, which I like is Manapuram. It's actually, I want to see it get past 181, 182 to buy it, but it's just trading there. So take a mild or a small BTSC position. With a stop at 178 for a target of 185. Okay, got that. Uh, all right, trying to see if there's any traction. Barring Adani Ports and uh, HCL Tech. These are the only two stocks on the Nifty that are managing a gain of in excess of 1%. Otherwise, it's an absolute uh, down and out day. Uh, there's a little bit of buying on an NTPC and a power grid, you know, patchy buying here and there. But otherwise, it's, it's not really working out. Just, uh, you know, very quickly, Mitesh. Uh, would you look at any trades in power? Because at least fundamentally, the news flow is fine. And, you know, uh, there's nothing wrong on uh, just the, the ground level sort of uh, fundamental check. But in terms of charts, if someone wants to take long trades, would power make the cut at all? Uh, see, you know, these the stocks have done extremely well in TPC, PFC, and RSC. And I think uh, now is the time when they are, you know, giving first signs of a pullback to the 10, 20 day average, which they haven't done for quite some time. So I think I'll avoid for a power for time. You want to pull back only I would want to play it. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you very much for that. Let's talk about Bajaj Auto. Uh, the stock is in focus as the board will consider a share buyback today. Sonia joins in with the market expectation. Sonia. Well, thanks a lot for that. Bajaj Auto will be considering the size and price of the buyback later in the evening and the stock will be in focus tomorrow as well. Now, remember, the board approved uh, a buyback. We don't know the extent of the amount, but the last time around there was a buyback was in June of 2022. At that time, the buyback amount was up to 2,500 crores. Given that the cash on the books has risen substantially since then, it's logical to assume that the buyback amount will be much higher this time around. Now, reports in indicate that the buyback could be to the tune of 5,000 crores, but the company did not confirm that. When we spoke to them last time around, they said that the buyback is an efficient way to return capital to shareholders and it is logical to assume that the buyback amount this time will be much higher than what we saw earlier. Remember, the company has 20,000 crores of cash on the books currently and they're looking to return it to shareholders considering that it has been a very good year for them. They also spoke about how they have re-engineered their business to invest in new technologies. The year is turned turning out to be much better than the previous one. They have invested in a new plant for KTM in Chak and Pune and a lot of investments are being made in technologies as well as facilities for the new Chetak. They also spoke about how whenever the cash on the books crosses 15,000 crores, they look to give back over 70% to their investors. The stock has been on a tear. In the month of January, it crossed 7,000 rupees for the first time ever. It hit a fresh lifetime high and the stock in the last six months has risen almost 50%. Okay, all right, Sonia, thank you very much. We are going to watch out for the, the extent, the quantum of that buyback that got the stock so excited. Remember, 7,000 was uh, seen immediately after that news came in. Gurmeet Chadha joins in from Complete Circle uh, uh, Investments. Now, Gurmeet, good afternoon. Thank you for joining us on the show. So first off the ground, uh, Bajaj Auto, how's the ride looking? You know, the, the stock's already had a great run. Then comes this buyback announcement. Mr. Rajiv Bajaj sounding so optimistic about the level of cash the company continues to generate sales. He's saying 4 lakh units every month, probably on a steady run rate basis. So the question is, uh, you know, is it still good for a buy or is it all in the price now? Uh, some of it, uh, Surpi, is in the price. Uh, you know, and I think there are multiple levers in Bajaj. One, obviously, is the numbers picked up uh, in the festive season. Uh, then there is expectation of recovery in exports market, which is perhaps the largest for Bajaj uh, and a bit of Aisha. Even if you see TVS also started, you know, making inroads there in a lot of export markets. I think addition of Triumph was another trigger a few months back and they've been guiding for another 100 stores. Uh, and I think the way in passenger cars, if you see, is the guys in the MUV and the, the PMMization playing out. So two-thirds of the cars sold today are... Are SUV similarly in uh, motorcycles, two thirds of the bikes are now above 125 cc. 
So the upper end, uh, you know, the premiumization is playing out across, you know, whether it is real estate, whether it is home improvement, whether it is Bajaj Auto. Uh, so my sense is that, uh, you know, it still trades at about 20 times, not, not very, very expensive. Uh, and, and they've guided that, you know, it's 20,000 crore cash. The size of the buy buy should also be uh, uh, reasonable. Uh, so it looks reasonable to me, but maybe maybe the best of the returns, maybe 60-70% uh, is in the price. Mm. Uh, by the way, Sula is now locked in an upper circuit of about 20%. It was anyway up 16 17%, but now it's an upper circuit. Uh, Gurmeet, um, you know, 836, 863 target price on Sula. Um, you know, I'm not asking whether you're a consumer, but are you a buyer in the stock at current level? CLSA has given two rationales. One, increasing penetration of wine consumption in India. And two, the subsidy which has been introduced by the Maharashtra government, which will benefit them. But the stock at the current levels. Srinivar, this is classic bull market for you. And any good news that you see, you know, uh, up a circuit on on any small names in the market, right? That's what happened with Sula. So that's the call you have to take. It's very difficult as a portfolio manager when you see, and mind you, the markets are fairly weak today. Uh, so, you know, it's just that the good, good news is getting priced in so quickly across counters, especially in the small mid-cap space, that it becomes difficult then to take a call for, for, a, for a medium term. But, you know, I agree with you. On a long-term basis, which I said earlier, too, will be uh, this premiumization, this more spending, uh, and you know the new generation, you know, wanting to do experience economy over asset ownership is driving all of this, right? And uh, so structural levers in place, uh, government support in place, uh, pretty positive. But I would want slightly better prices. A lot of names I like, I would probably want slightly better more prices to enter. Okay, by the way, I just want to point out that we are now testing last week's low on the Nifty and we've just broken this level of 21,500. Lots and lots of pressure all over. By the way, the entire consumption, frontline consumption pack is so weak. Britannia, Nestle, Asian Paints, no sign of revival on these stocks. ITC, you name it, all your large cap names. Uh, they're down and out, so no recovery coming in. Bank Nifty down 740, no recovery on the banks whatsoever. Uh, so plenty of weak trends. Would we just come in on the market as a whole? Today is one of those unusual days where the market has a secular one-way grinding fall. There's been no meaningful recovery or bounce. What do you think uh, perhaps is you know, unnerving markets? Is it just getting into earnings and now you'll see the, the reality in the numbers? Is that the nervousness? You know, why no meaningful bounce today? Uh, difficult to really uh, you know, so we comment on a daily basis, right? But uh, I, think, I think one thing which is very, uh, you know, clear is there's some bit of profit taking is obviously happening across the board. Also, the market is assuming that there will be rate cuts, inflation number will be lower. Uh, any challenge to this, you know, any delay in by Fed, any challenge to inflation number, one month pop-up in inflation number can lead to some bit of pullbacking. And mind you, we've had like almost 3,000 points on Nifty one way. Uh, some some pullback is healthy actually. I don't mind the uh, market is actually consolidating a little bit and and look at you know everybody is saying there is froth in small mid cap and it's actually the large cap which are correcting more. So market in the short run is designed to you know make you look stupid you know sometimes in the short run. But I think I think there are opportunities which will come uh, and and bull market corrections also are sharp. I still won't call it a correction, but I think anything I think it's, it's, we continue to be on a buy on step buy on dip mode as far as our stance goes. Mm. You know, uh, Surabhi, uh, it reminds me, there was, I think, uh, in the 70s, one of the one of Warren Buffett's earliest interviews, he was asked uh, to, uh, to, I think, the, I don't remember the exact question, but it was, is the, why is the market correcting uh, so sharply? Mm. His answer was, it is an irrational reaction to a previous irrational reaction on the way up. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, uh, <clears throat> it's just, you know, that's market's view, right? Yeah, absolutely. And, I, I liked uh, Gurmeet's uh, reply as well. The market is designed to make you stupid. And as long as... I look stupid, not to look stupid. Yeah, to look stupid. I hope it's not the uh, <laughs> former. But, but you know, it, it, we had a fantastic uh, December. We made this point for the last... Uh, actually, going into last year as well, uh, going into the end of the year as well, that, uh, you know, in the last 16 years, and we put that data out on Editor's Roundtable, after very strong gains... Uh, especially the kind that we had last year, 2023, uh, it's never happened that we <clears throat> have continued that streak into into January. But that does not mean uh, that, uh, you know, <clears throat> this, what we're seeing now is what we'll get for the rest of the year. It's just, what, six days. Today is the sixth day out of 250 plus working days. So it's very, very short term we're talking about. But 200 points lower, 21,500 is where we are at. 
We'll take a very quick break here. More on markets on the other side. Stay tuned. Welcome back. So we've been discussing the uh, weakness, uh, you know, in in today's day. Let's take some final thoughts with the Gurmeet. Gurmeet, you mentioned that, you know, despite this uh, little fall, your team has been uh, invested, and you you keep looking for opportunities. So tell us, so where are they? You know, are, are you still looking at uh, pockets like capital goods, defence, etc., or you know, something else, something new? What's on the radar uh, in 2024, at least in January 2024? <coughs> Uh, so you know, I think uh, we we are looking at uh, you know selectively capital goods and defense. I think today, for example, uh, solar industry is one of the portfolio stocks we hold. Got a uh, export order for Pinaka rockets. Now, very very significant. You know, this actually doubles their order book for defense from around which is around thousand crores to straight away two thousand crores. Obviously, the stock is down because of what market is down. But interesting development as the defense order book keeps on building up. Uh, and they've shown the you know that the margins are sustaining it looks good uh, we are looking at selectively some railway names as well by i also think a lot of them have run up uh, and probably captured next three four years good news uh, so we like titagar i think there is a clear visibility both for wagons as well as one day bharat and metro coaches 
And now that they have this backward integration with the propulsion system and, and forging wheels, uh, it gives you an added advantage and more control over cost as well. Uh, so that's something we are looking at. Uh, and as I said earlier, I like this premiumization. I think this new generation is, is the experience economy. So anything which is high-end, which is watches or jewelry, travel, uh, you know, uh, cars, etc. I think it, it's looking good. And the last one which we have discussed earlier so is this religious tourism. We're still trying to put our heads together to go beyond the IRCTC and, and Indigos and Hotels of the World. Look at some names which are, you know, into let's say personal protection equipment, uh, companies who are actually doing a lot of construction work in, in these, these religious sites and maybe get to level two, level three there. You, uh, it's you... the Ayodhya factor. I guess that's caught uh, Gurmeet's uh, attention as well. Gurmeet? Oh, absolutely. See, uh, Ujjain had uh, 10 lakh visitors on 31st. They used to get 10 lakh the entire year when I did my MBA, uh, you know, from Indore. Uh, look at Kashi, 9 crore versus, you know, 90 lakhs for Goa, 10 times. I think Ayodhya will probably make more records. Uh, so I think this will this will really catch up, you know. I think this movement towards uh, uh, being spiritual, the kind of stress environment all of us are in, and the infrastructure obviously government is uh, creating. So I think probably will, this will play out. And tourism is, you know, informally one of the largest sectors of the economy. Impacts everyone to the lowest strata, uh, you know, of the society. Yeah, you you meant uh, did did you buy uh, this company called Preveg, uh, Gurmeet? Uh, it went up too quickly, Prashad, like so many names, right? But we're looking at, as I said, something in the personal uh, protection equipment space, something called Malcolm, we're still reviewing it. Uh, I think even IRCTC is due. I mean, you, uh, I think uh, it's one of the finest names in PSUs. It's just that the government intervened with the convenience pricing on ticketing that, you know, derailed things a little bit, but another very fine stock. It's done well, 30-35%, uh, I think, in the last couple of uh, months. So, uh, <coughs> IRCTC, uh, a proxy railway play, and I think unlike some of the other railway companies, uh, it's of course.